that we have our special guest here. It's Dr. Vinaka from the UK. Dear Vinaka, thank you so much for joining in to my very first podcast in the universe. <laughs> thank you for having me. I'm really excited. Yes, Dr. Vinaka, she is my dear friend. And we met um, in August 2023 at the one and only Arthur Finley College in Stansted yeah. Hall. Wasn't that a great time when we met? Oh, what an amazing experience. It was wonderful. And I just love how we met as well. Just ended up sitting next to each other at the dinner table. Yes, it's so cool. And going to going to the Arthur Findlay College always reminds me of Harry Potter when the kids go to Hogwarts and they take the tray and find the seat. <laughs> I felt like the food was like that as well. There was so much. It was never ending. Every day, three times a day. <laughs> Yes, and the dessert buffet was amazing. I know, I know. The dessert two times a day. <laughs> it was wonderful. Yeah, we made it really special. We were sitting next to each other at the dining table, and then we found out that we have similar journeys. I know, it was amazing. I love how easily and quickly we connected. It was just, it was so easy. Yes, yes. And then we also have, karmic connections as we found out at the la very last day we found out with karmic connections with the russian planet code yes and so would you like to introduce yourself and what about your journey what brought you to the college and yeah. wow um <laughs> i never know where to start when someone asks me that question um but i guess um I'll start from like last November. Um, I felt like I was in a place where I was just kind of ready to go and explore the world in a different way. And um, through my journeys, um, everything was shifting around me. And I just, I'd got to a point where my exterior world life did not match how I was feeling inside. And I knew that I had to make a change. And funnily enough, Arthur Finley has been on my vision board for about four years. And I was never sure when it was going to happen. But as I traveled from November, I started traveling and I just went from country to country. And in March, um, I think it was March. Yes, I ended up at Arthur Finley for the first time. And I had no idea I was going to be there. I literally booked the course a week before and I was there. And after I left, I didn't know whether I'd come back and I continued my travels. And then in August, the same thing happened again. I just looked online and there was a course that I really wanted to do. And I ended up there again. And <laughs> that's that when I met you. Um, but I feel like my journey since November has been one of just magic and miracles and just going with the flow and listening to the whispers of the universe and um we both spoke about this manuela that it's scary when when you start doing that but it, it's just been amazing and um along the way i get to meet incredible people like yourself and have these amazing conversations and get inspired and um yeah i feel like meeting you was another um affirmation from the universe of how like beautifully everything is orchestrated and you just meet the right people at the right time at the right place mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and I feel like this relationship with you really demonstrates that yes yes thank you thank you thank you for the flowers and it's so interesting it just popped in um I did once a couple of weeks ago I did a ritual before the Arthur Findlay College week I did a ritual and my ritual was all about meeting like-minded people. <laughs> mm. you know, it sounds maybe simple, but like in my area where I live in Switzerland, it's not so um, simple to meet like-minded people. And this is why I want to start a community and yeah. a podcast to meet like-minded people and to get to know each other. And this is amazing. Yeah. And that was on my, um, like I had it on my phone like a little affirmation and it said um I attract to me towards me people that 
um, I like I'm inspired by and um, that was back in October last year and since then I just keep meeting all these amazing people um, and I just yeah it's just been wonderful and I just find it so incredible that the people that I'm meeting are from all over the world from different backgrounds and like I was in Australia and you're in Switzerland and we meet in London and we, we share so much similarities and our stories align so much. Um, yeah, I think that's just incredible. It's amazing. Yes. Yeah. The universe is watching all over and putting together the right people at the right time. Yeah. And it, it's just amazing sometimes how it works and when you do affirmations. And for example, I have like a mantra I like to say, I'm attracting the best people. I'm a magnet for the best people. And it worked out at the college with my roommate. It was amazing. And yeah, meeting you, I am attracting the best people into my life. And this is such a powerful mantra and it's the power of words. Right. And like what we think about matters so much. Mm -hmm. um, it's like the energy that we're putting out into the universe and it's communicating with the universe what we want. I never yes. knew this part. Like it's something that I've like really started learning that we're constantly communicating with the world around us and our words and our thoughts are so powerful. Yes, and it's totally underestimated. People sometimes um, talk bad about themselves. I'm da da da, you know, and then a negative word and we have really to be mindful and when we are mindful, it's like exactly like attracting the best people. And I had, for example, I had never um, one single doubt that my roommate at the college would be not um, resonate with me. I had never one single second of doubt. <laughs> yeah. And, and it was so, it was so amazing. But yeah, it's back to you. Um so what well, is no, actually you? I want to hear about your journey because when I spoke to you at Arthur Finley, um, you you had gone through such massive changes in the past year, and I was so inspired by the changes that you had made. So yeah, I'd love to hear more. Yes, thank you. This is also a goal and um, to inspire people and motivate people to never give up, follow their dreams. And yeah, I was working 11 years in a bank in Switzerland. And yeah, I left the bank last summer, June 2022. I left the bank and focus on my shamanic coach education. I built up my healing oasis. I built up a shamanic chalet so people can come to my place and we do bonfires. We do um, animal cards, readings, and we do tree hugging. And people love it so much. And I work together with the tourism office because this is where it's all happening. It's a big touristy area. And the tourist office was very excited that I do this. Probably they think I'm crazy <laughs> because we dance around <laughs> the bonfire. <laughs> but, you know, I don't mind what people think. The guests, um, they love it so much. Mm -hmm. But isn't and it funny that, you know, back in the day in the ancient ages or, you know, the tribal uh, communities used to sit around the fire and that mm -hmm. was normal. And it's now normal, yeah. we're worried that people will think it's crazy when it's one of the most normal and natural things to do. Absolutely. Yeah. For me personal, it's normal to sit around the bonfire. Then we throw um, like an animal card, a power animal card. and yeah, for me, it's normal. For me, it's all normal to go in the forest and do tree hugging, connect with the tree spirit. Yeah. And then I have my drums. You can see I have my shamanic drum here. And then I drum for the people for healing. And it's, yeah, for me, it's normal. But people like in the mountain area, they're a little bit narrow minded and they um, probably think, okay, now she's crazy. But <laughs> for me, it's normal. For me, yeah, it's to me, normal. it's like normal too. <laughs> What is and I love it. <laughs> it was amazing when I had um, during the summertime I had people coming. There was like a group of people with special um abilities and they loved it so much. They were after the event, it's like one and a half hours. And after the event, everybody everybody was hugging me and thanking, and it was so 
it was so sweet. And this is what I love to do. <laughs> to and make people it. happy and give some yeah. healing. When you talk about it, you, you're just glowing. <laughs> oh, yes, I love it so much. <laughs> So how did you end up um, studying shamanism? Like, how did you end up on that path? How did it come to you? It's so interesting. Um, well, I started 2006 with Feng Shui. When we go back a little bit, then I did um, consulting for people's um, houses and mm. apartments. And you can see the, the, the correlation between Feng Shui, working with the five elements and healing with five elements. Wow, yeah. Yeah, I started with Feng Shui a couple of years ago, yeah, 2006, then I moved into mediumship. Somehow, you know, you meet a person, the person takes you to a circle. <laughs> so it's like, it's like a journey. And then I did mediumship a while, and then I did, we started then with spiritual healing like 12 years ago in Zurich. And then I discovered the Arthur Finlay College. And it was interesting. In 2019, um, I was at the Arthur Finlay College. And then I saw um, a flyer in the hallway. And the, it was it said, Shamanic Week, March 2020. And we didn't know what's going to happen then. But I thought, my first thought was, Shamanic Week, let's sign up for that. And at that time, I have no clue what Shamanic means or is. I just had this feeling I have to sign up. Mm -hmm. So I signed up like a year before. And then I was totally thrilled. We did in the mornings, we had a tipi. We did um, chanting with drums before meditation before the actual course started and it gave me so much empowerment and sitting around the bonfire burning wishes this week was for me extremely um, powerful and it empowered me for about two years I mean it's still <laughs> continuing because we all know 2020 was so crazy what all started around the world my mom was on the way to spirit. She was in the hospital. So everything was like together at the same time. But I felt so empowered with thanks to this shamanic week. And then I thought, oh my God, this is so powerful. I will do this and offer this for people like in my area. So people can experience the power of the fire element, the power of tree hugging. And then I built up my Little shamanic chalet. <laughs> I love it. I love the photos you've shown me. It looks so beautiful. Yes. And I now I have I can a visit soon. Excuse me? I hope I can come visit soon. It looks yes. gorgeous. It's beautiful. Yes. And it's really magic between, like at Halloween, it's really magical. And yeah, Christmas, New Year. Depends on the snow level, you know. We got yeah. tons of Halloween snow. is coming up soon. Are you going to do something special? Um, yes. Like last year, I did. I invite for Halloween. I invite and uh, the ancestors, and then I do a ritual with the bonfire, inviting the ancestors, and we have like a little get together family reunion. You did it last. That's wonderful. Yeah. Because most of my family is in the spirit world. I don't have a lot of people in the physical world around me. And then we decided to be my husband. We said, okay, let's do a family reunion. Mm, that's great. And yeah. And we, we could really feel the energy, how it changed when we invited in our ancestors. Mm. So it was really, really a happy family gathering. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so this was a little bit my journey. And when you, last November, when what was your turning point when you said, I want to go traveling, I want to go see the world from another perspective? Yeah. You know what? I, um, I started getting this feeling in August, and it's just, you know, in, like, I just felt like nothing felt right. Like I just felt like restless, really restless. And um, even if I if I was sitting, my legs would just keep moving. And I'm like, 
I'd need to move. I need to move. But I would go to the gym or I'd go yoga. And it was still there, this like restlessness. And um, I think it was September. I just did so much journaling. Like I journal a lot anyway, but I was just writing and writing and writing. And I was just in this deep place of contemplation. And um, yeah, I just something happened where I was like, if nothing changes, nothing changes. Like I have to do something. I have to take action. It's very easy just to sit and wish and hope or, you know, have these dreams, but I have to actually take steps to, you know, live the life that I want to live. And I really believe that um, we are conscious creators of our lives. Like we're constantly creating what we want to experience. And I just, I got to a point where I was like, I just have to do something. And um, my brother's wedding was coming up in November in India. So I decided, you know, as soon as the wedding finished, I would just continue traveling. And in that time, I had to end my lease on my apartment. Um, I had a very successful clinic as well that I had to close. I um, sold all my furniture, gave all my clothes to um, the Salvation Army, so the charity, local charity store, and started saying goodbye to everyone. And I was really scared to tell people because I thought that maybe they would think that I'm having a breakdown or like she's gone crazy. Um, but to be honest, my friends were really supportive. And, um, and yeah, I just remember walking out of my apartment and I just had one backpack. That was it. <laughs> and wow. I owned and the couple of nights leading up, I didn't even have a bed. So I was sleeping on the floor <laughs> and of my apartment. Um, so, yeah, I feel like for me, it was a long time coming. I was ready to move in 2020, but with, with everything that happened, I just felt like my, like, you know, journey shifted and changed and, yeah, it got to a point where I could no longer stay where I was. I had to, I had to move. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I've never looked back. I've never looked back. Oh, this is so wonderful. Yeah, mm -hmm. if we get this feeling of getting out, doing something different, no matter what, yeah. I think it's all signs from the universe, yeah. you know, even like from my side, I had some incidents at work and I was like, I'm totally in the wrong place. I cannot, I cannot continue like this until I'm 65 and then officially retired. It would kill me before, way before. It was not my soul's path to work in a bank. It was just okay to do it for a certain time. Okay, it was like 11 years. It's quite a certain <laughs> time. But, <laughs> but still... If you have this, you have this feeling you're like burning to that your past goes somewhere else. So I totally did, feel you. Did you have like a moment that just changed everything for you, or was it something that happened gradually? Um, yeah, it was the moment like two weeks before my 50th birthday. I was so determined I will not continue like this you know like this means working in the bank nine to five no promotion when it came to salary increases I was always the forgotten one you know and I was like okay the universe gave me a lot of signs and then two weeks before my birthday I was so really determined now okay this has to end then I was starting to think about um, I had already a web page, but um, I wasn't really doing in my head my strategy. And then I came across, it was 2021, I came across accidentally, but there are no accidentalists, <laughs> um, was this education, this training called Shamanic Coach. And it was right in November 21. And I was like, wow, this is exactly what I'm looking for. It has to do with astrology. It has to do with healing, magic, ceremonies, all the shamanism. So we are all connected. We are all one. We are connected to the trees, to the animals. Yes, to the to the stones. Everything is correlated and connected. 
then so it was like I decided um, to move on. Then I found this training, a one year training. And then I signed up for the training. And my teacher said at the very beginning of the course, this course will change your life. And I first thought, no, not me, you know. And then, yes, while I was doing this um, shamanic coach training, I felt, okay, the bank was like drifting away from me and I was more determined to resign and more determined. And then I got sick. March 22, I was one month in bed. I was really sick with, with the flu and fever. And this was the moment, like, when I was in bed for a month, I said to myself, I promised myself when I will get um, healthy again, I will resign. And then the last day in March, I was back at work, not 100%, but... But I handed out my handed in my resignation. So this was like this process from realizing, okay, you turn fifty, this cannot be the life. And then you, I found this um, training on shamanic healing, and then I got sick. So it was like a puzzle. And then I resigned March end of March twenty twenty two. Yes, I, and here I am doing my first podcast with you. <sighs> Wow. And you're um, going to be speaking at a conference in a couple of weeks. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Yes. I would never have thought I would ever end up speaking in a conference because I'm actually too shy to speak in front of people. So, yes, it's the UFO conference. It's... um. And it's, they have also like a section of healing and they have found me on LinkedIn. Wow. Um, on LinkedIn, I have my job title is no longer some bank, com, some corporate title. It's now shamanic coach. And they found it interesting. Someone from Switzerland um, mm. is shamanic coach. And yes, the next week I'll be there I at think. the conference. And speaking, and I have my shamanic healing workshop. And I'm so excited. Oh, my God. What a big change for both of us. Like, you know, going from corporate to this amazing, yes. different, yes. different career path. So before you went on to your travels, maybe the audience would like to know a little bit more what your corporate life looked like before moving out <laughs> yeah so um, I um, studied medicine in London and I graduated as a doctor um, when I was 23 and so I was young and I feel like at that time um, it was very much encouraged to job security was everything and um, I feel like a lot of that comes from like the generation above where, you know, job security was a challenge. So I feel like those beliefs were um, passed on to me. And for me, yeah, job security and, you know, knowing that I would be okay in the world was probably most important at that age. And I really loved caring for people. It was something that came really naturally to me. And I was always interested in the human body and healing. Um, so at the time, it just felt like a right fit. And um, after I graduated, I worked in so many different specialties. I worked in emergency medicine and trauma and general practice and women's health. But there was never just one specialty that like resonated with me and felt like this is it. So I was doing something that not everyone else was doing at the time. Everyone was speak, picking a specialty and, you know, going forward. And I was just like, I don't know. <laughs> so I decided to move to Australia. <laughs> um, and again, it was a whisper. Um, I remember being at work one day and it was like, move to Australia, move to Australia. And I'm like, what? I've never been to Australia. <laughs> like, I don't even know what Australia's like. And um I think about a year, I think maybe two, a year or two after that that message, um, I booked a one-way ticket to Australia. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, without ever having visited. 
And when I got to Australia, I started working in emergency and um, I didn't realize that all the years of working and shift work and, you know, long hours were actually contributing to me myself becoming burnt out. And I was not particularly enjoying the working environment and the politics involved and yeah I was just I just felt quite stuck and um, I wanted to leave but I, I didn't know how to and you know I was limited with my options and at that time um, cosmetic uh, injectables and medicine was becoming this new new thing and I thought you know if I go down this path then I have more um, freedom over the hours that I work and more independence and I can have my own business and be a bit more creative so I went down that path and I had no idea why I was going down this path it wasn't like I was particularly passionate but I loved seeing and working with women like that was the part that I enjoyed so much and all these women were coming to see me and they were burnt out they were looking for solutions to make themselves look less tired and feel refreshed and feel more youthful. And I'm like, there's women out there that feel exactly the same way that I do. And uh, they're looking for answers and there's not much out there. And if they went to their GP, the general practitioner, you know, they might be put on tablets or, you know, it's just like, I felt like, like what the problem that was, I was seeing there was no um, conventional medical solution for it. It's just people were just feeling disconnected with themselves and yeah. that's what they were looking for. And they had ended up in my clinic looking at cosmetic injectables as a way to reconnect to themselves. And this really, um, as my journey progressed and I started like I started with meditation and, you know, really simple relaxation techniques and things for my own stress management, each thing led to another. And, you know, I went down this, this rabbit hole of spirituality and it was like, wow, there's so many things out there. And I wanted to bring all these things and share it with the women that I was seeing and my appointments started turning into these like spiritual sessions and healing sessions. And um, we started talking um, in the sessions about, you know, things that you don't really talk about. And it was amazing. I met so many incredible women and, you know, we'd have these amazing inspirational conversations and often like they didn't even want to have the cosmetic treatment. They just wanted to go to a place where they could be themselves and, talk and just feel free and um I realized that was probably the most important thing that that we needed like to feel connected and have something that we can share with each other and not feel crazy <laughs> you know yeah. um so yeah I, I, that business ran for about six years and I learned so much about running a business and branding and you know mm -hmm. um managing um things and um, the business was really successful and closing it was probably one of the hardest things I've had to do because I had to close and, and say goodbye to all the women I was seeing but I also oh. knew it was a new path and a new journey where I wanted to like completely focus on what it was that I loved and that was you know bringing this awareness and you know another way of healing and helping women to connect deeper to themselves and um yeah all these forgotten practices and rituals and magic mm -hmm. that um that have been around for thousands of years and and have been forgotten and I feel like they're, they're coming back to mainstream um the mainstream population so I'm really excited to be part of that journey now and now I don't really know what to define myself as, but I, I call myself a holistic coach and just integrate and combine everything that I've learned and to be able to bring that to um to people. So yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. what a wonderful story. But yeah. isn't it interesting? First people come to your place to get injections, and mm. the only thing they probably needed was just to talk. 
like to her soulmate. So one-to-one -one <laughs> talking with someone who understands them, who is not questioning. Mm, or trying to give them a medication or exactly, make them yeah. feel like they're crazy. It's just, we all just want to open our hearts and just be ourselves. And that's where yeah. true freedom comes from. It's just the permission to be yourself. Absolutely. All of it. Yeah, and this is so beautiful that, that that you opened your heart to to all your clients and then you are like the holistic coach and they saw you then from another perspective. Wasn't it hard for your clients that you moved back <laughs> to the UK? Yeah, I still get messages on Instagram. Um but it's it's really um interesting because I feel like I, I got to know my patients on such a deep level that they were so supportive as well of this journey. And in a way they were like, you know, we're sad to see you go, but we're excited to see where, you, where, um, where this takes you. So mm -hmm. um, it's really nice. I've, I'm still in touch with them and um, they've been following my journey as well and, and the changes. So yeah, I feel like it's, it's an expansion and a transformation rather than a goodbye. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yes, and this is also something like this, this transformation is it's so important. I mean, also to be like um, to inspire other people to to follow their paths, to take the risk, um, to be courageous and say, okay, I will do it. I will close this because I always say when you close one door, another door is opening up. I, I very much believe that. You have to get rid of the old to yeah. create room for the new. Yeah. Absolutely. This is also from my side. I had to close my chapter of the corporate world, say so goodbye to the banking industry. And then I finished my shamanic studies and opened up my healing oasis. I had to close down. Some people do it like in parallel, but it was never my style to do yeah. like parallel. Yeah. And I relate to that because that's what I felt like I was doing up until November. It was like I was trying to do two things together and they were kind of mm -hmm. conflicting with one another. So I was internally conflicted and externally conflicted. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just had to, um, I actually like, I felt like I was standing on the edge of a cliff and I just needed to jump to fly. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. But it was so scary. It was really scary. Yes, yes. Um, it always sounds so simple. Oh, yeah, you know, you just close down your business, <laughs> you sell your furniture, goodbye. But it's it's a big step. It's It's a huge step, to be honest. Oh, such a um, like it, there's such an internal process that comes with it and you know dealing with the emotions and the fear and you know the what ifs and all those limiting beliefs you know mm -hmm. that I can't do this or can I do this or what will people think and yeah the, all those yeah. things yeah yes and what if it's not working out and yeah and extremely dear I also grew up with this strange beliefs, this, you know, this dogma. It's like, um, yeah, you have to work until you're 65 to pay taxes, be a good citizen, shut up and, <laughs> and be quiet and don't say anything. <laughs> absolutely. And I remember when, like, when I got the job at the bank, like, yeah, 12, 13 years ago, my mom said to me, now I'm so happy that you finally ended up at the bank. This was her glory. Her only daughter finally gets a job at the bank. And she said, I always have dreamed of you sitting in the bank. And I was like, oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> it paid the bills. <laughs> but, you know, this, this belief system, um, which I had from my mother, from my grandparents, you know, it's like, it's so deep and then you have to like break the chains and get out of it and it's it sounds simple but yeah sometimes yeah. it needs some power 
Because these beliefs are embedded so deep into our subconscious that yes. we're not even aware of them. It's like I was going through the motions of life and, you know, for a long time I didn't even question why I was doing what I was doing. And mm. then when I started questioning and, you know, started really diving deep into what are my subconscious beliefs and what's driving my actions, that's when I was like, wow, like, why am I doing this? I started questioning everything. Like, why, why, why? Like a little kid would, why? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what a kid does. They, you know, they ask why, why, why? And then the parents say, because I said so, <laughs> you know, <laughs> there's no you're not given a reason and after a certain point you forget to keep questioning and you just believe what you're told and I got oh, to a point where I'm like I can't I can't do it anymore I can't just believe what I'm told I need to go find the truth for myself yes yeah. absolutely and I felt then also I had the same patterns like we have so many similarities I was just doing the the banking job without questioning and then it was like what am I doing here is this the purpose is this purpose of my soul to do this kind of work it doesn't help humanity it helps a few bankers to get richer and richer and get big fat bonus but it doesn't help humanity and so my goal has been ever since then to help humanity to empower themselves yeah and to to learn and to Yes, and this is why I also thought um, I did my online courses, which are now launching by the end of the week. Yay! So I want to teach people how to do a money ritual, you know, so everybody should live in abundance. And yes, yes. All these things which has been around for thousands of years, and we have forgotten them. And this is what uh, was my, um, my purpose when I said, no, banking job is not what I want to do it doesn't make sense to me I wake up in the morning and I do a job for people to help them to become richer and I'm not working for my company I work for any company and then it was so so meaningless so my life felt so meaningless it was like yeah you wake up and you feel so so useless yeah yeah and then since my transition into my new life, I feel so, so happy. And yeah, every Monday morning is a happy Monday. <laughs> what day is it? It was Tuesday today. Yeah, like every day is a happy day. <laughs> now, yeah, there's no Monday morning feeling <laughs> anymore for a long time. Did you yeah. have the same? Um, well, I worked shift work, so oh, yeah, that's even worse. <laughs> it wasn't nine to five, um, it was more shift based, but um, it's interesting. Um, like expanding on what you were saying, it's like we think that we work for someone, but they work for someone, and then they work for someone, and they work for someone. It's like, who are you actually working for? Mm -hmm. And you know, you're at this the bottom of this chain, and for me, I just felt so robotic, you know, like I was just going through the motions of life every day. It's like wake up, go to work, perform, come home, eat, go to sleep and repeat. And um, yeah, that's how I felt like I was living for a really long time. And it's just like, it's like the colors of life had been sucked and drained out of me. And as I left and, you know, I, I went on my own healing journey. It's like the color came back and life became more vivid again. And it, I, I no longer felt like a robot. It's like I'm constantly every moment creating what I want to experience. And mm -hmm. it's such a beautiful way of living. And, yes, it was scary to walk this path that's less traveled, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's so worth it, so worth it to wake up in the morning and actually be excited about what's going to happen. And that's what I yes. feel like. I wake up in the morning, I'm like, what's going to happen today? Like, yeah. what miracles are going to happen today? It's just so exciting. Yes, this is absolutely, it's no more this Monday morning. And as you said, you work for someone hours and hours and overtime and and yeah, and and then at the end of the day, at the end of the month, it's like, 
okay so what's next and this was for me as well it's it's like a hamster wheel you're like in a hamster wheel uh, and, yeah. and you don't know how to get out first and then suddenly yeah. you realize okay this cannot be the real the real life no and especially when I wake up now, um, I do all my work for myself. I do a lot of late hour work, especially with my online courses in three languages. So I have a platform. So I do all the videos and the script and I do rituals. And yeah, so to, I work so many hours, but I do it for me, for, for, mm -hmm. for humanity. So people can can benefit from what I've learned in the last couple of years. And I want to share what I've learned so far. This is life makes so so much more sense to me. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes se so much more sense living this way. Yeah. Yes. Otherwise, we're just living for I don't know paying taxes. <laughs> That's another. <laughs> And like you said, it's Topic. like you're running, constantly running, but you're not moving anywhere. You're just stuck. Exactly. In place. Yeah. And maybe you, you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I was just. And... <laughs> you go first. No, no, it's okay. Sorry. Go first. Oh, okay. I was just saying the universe is evolving and expanding and. Mm -hmm. And we need to be growing and expanding and evolving with the universe to stay in harmony. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like the old way of living is so counterproductive. And I feel like all these old paradigms are slowly breaking down. And there's so many people that I'm meeting and, you know, have this awareness. And it's just incredible. I feel such a massive shift happening at the moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it gives me um, another topic, the 5D consciousness we are moving in, like mm -hmm. the personal side and also like in the universal perspective that the 5D consciousness is now shifting and we are moving into this part. Where the, some people, are they love to be stuck in 3D, but... Well, it's the middle for the 3d is is familiar like it's just what we're used to and you know the 5d it's almost like it's the unknown it's like whoa, it is. what is it like what's there but it's exciting yes it is absolutely amazing times to have the courage and to be to follow the soul's purpose and to follow the sometimes the the inputs when you got the input to move to australia and i got sometimes here like someone standing here and telling me what to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel that all the time. It's like this whisper, like constantly here going, do this, do that. And the more I resist it, the more difficult I make my own life. <laughs> um, and when I listen, it's just like everything just falls into place. It's just like, mm -hmm. see, mm -hmm. that's what you're meant to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Um. So um, we're almost around time. We always already have spoken almost an hour. No, really? Yes. Wow, that went so quick. Is there anything you would like? Shall we wrap up? Um, is there anything you, you would like to share and tell our audience, give some inspirational views from your exciting life yeah I just um I feel like community is is so important especially with the changes the world is going through and um you know connecting with like-minded people and you know building those relationships is so valuable and it's made such a difference in my life and you know we can sit here and have these conversations and and speak out loud what's going on within us I just think that's just amazing so um yeah I just want to just yeah really really say community is is everything at the moment and, um having each other I think is just beautiful yeah yeah this is also so what I like 
what the Arthur Finley College when you go there and you meet like-minded people and and to build up a community. And when I came back home from the college, I got this little angel here and saying to me, do a podcast, do a podcast. And I was first, oh my God, I have no experience, <laughs> you know, first yeah. my fears. <laughs> then I yeah. thought, just do it. Just hit the button, record, upload it in on YouTube and see what happens. Yeah. So I always say to myself, um, and sometimes when I question things, I say, what do I have to lose? Right. Yeah. Exactly. And this is why I came up with this, with the idea of a podcast, not me, maybe spirit, the universe came with the podcast idea to, to, to build up a community and to meet like-minded people so we can exchange and learn from each other and meet each other. And yeah. we are all connected. Yes. Very yeah. simple. <laughs> yeah. It's just nice to meet in person. <laughs> yes, it is nice to meet in person. That's true. But still, thanks to, to Zoom, we can do all kinds of, of podcast interviews, whatever. It's better yeah. than 20 yeah. years ago. Yeah, definitely. So connected now. So many opportunities and ways to connect. Yes, yes, especially also online. And yeah, there's so many possibilities. Yes, and um, shall we conclude our podcast? What do you think? I think it's a perfect time, yeah. It's a perfect timing. So yeah. thank you very much, Dr. Binaka, for thank coming you. into my very first podcast. Thanks. And thank you so much. It was a great, great pleasure having you here. And for more inspirational podcasts, please stay tuned on The Living Harmony on YouTube. I will bring in some more very interesting ladies and some gentlemen. So with that being said, wishing you love, light, and prosperity to all of you. Bye.